Hello world, I'm Blue Dolphin with the Hoplite Security Channel. And in this video, we're going to be getting into an introduction into the Cyber Defenders Pwned DC Lab. Let's get into it. Jumping right into things here, this is an amazing lab on Cyber Defenders called Pwned DC. It's a 3.5 gig download and what it is, is you're going to be getting some leftover files that were found during kind of a forensic and investigative process of a domain controller. And you're going to investigate these files and answer the following questions. We have a total of 32. And all our files come from this single domain controller. We also have a memory dump as well. So we're going to be learning a little about volatility, for example, and investigating memory dumps. Now let's take a look at the challenge details here regarding this domain controller investigation lab. So you can see here, the scenario reads an active directory compromise case. Adversaries were able to take over a corporate domain controller, investigate, investigate the case and reveal the who, when, what, where, why, and how, and these are all standard when it comes to an incident response. If you're ever in a situation where you are doing IR, you're going to be asked who did this? When did it happen? What happened? Where did it happen? Why and how? So I think this is fantastic. All right, let's also give a round of applause. This was published by cyber defenders themselves. Thank you very much for all the hard work that goes in to providing these amazing labs for us and the community at large to pr practice our skills in. And speaking of skills, you can see here that the tags section gives us an idea of what we're going to be learning here. It says memory, windows, disk and ransomware. So that's kind of a hint here. Let's take a look at the files we get by default. This is a very interesting set of files. So we have an ACL folder, which in it we have this bin file, which is named a long string. So that's obviously suspicious and a zip file. Then we have the active directory E01. So this is going to be the data dump here of our domain controller. It's three gigabytes. And then we have this text document. Let's actually take a quick look at this. All right, this is some information from FTK Imager. So it looks like FTK Imager was used and produced a case file. So that's interesting. All right. And then we also get the memory file, which I mentioned, this is a dot DMP. So we're going to be using volatility to analyze this. And then we get a network diagram. Let's take a look. All right. In this network diagram, you can see the devices that we're going to be dealing with in this lab, which are going to be PC01, our domain controller, of course, and Kali, a Kali box. So I AD, I'm not sure what ADE01 is then unless that's just the domain name. I'm not sure we're going to find out. Then of course we have a word list. All right. So let's jump into the tools that we're going to be using. And remember, we have 32 questions, 32, not 20, not 25, 32. This is going to take some time and I don't expect to have this completed overnight by any means. All right. So we're going to start off with the first two tools here, which are volatility two and three. And if you don't know, these are well, I use them in Linux from the command line and therefore analyzing .dmp files, which are the memory files that we see in the file and that were provided. And we're going to be investigating that to see what was going on on the computer at the time. And you can see here, if we click on the links, you can jump over to the GitHub page here, learn a little about volatility. You can also search up volatility top commands, volatility guides, and you're going to find a lot of information there. And you can see here that volatility, the official description is the volatile memory extraction framework. And it is indeed the world's most widely used framework for extracting digital artifacts from RAM. Very cool. All right. And I just want to point out here, one of the viewers had asked if he was going to need tons of VMs for all these tools. Great news. No, all you're going to need is a Windows machine and a Linux machine. And if you really wanted to, you could just use a Linux machine and just put all these tools on there. All right, let's take a look at the next tool. We're going to be looking at autopsy and autopsy plugin. So if you don't know, autopsy is an amazing 
open source forensic tool. I have it installed and I'm always using it for CTS. It's totally free. All these tools are free, by the way. Download Autopsy, install it, and when you open your file, it's gonna look something like this. And it's actually going to go through and use what's called a ingester. And the ingester modules comb over all the data and they parse it and organize it. Like you can see here, we have email messages, web cookies, we have the Windows file system, user files, so on and so forth. But keep in mind, it took about an hour for me to fully ingest this file with those ingester modules. So when you do use autopsy and open up your file, just give it some time and look in the bottom right corner and that's gonna show you the load time. And make sure you click on that to see all the tasks or you might be a little confused at first. All right, let's get back over to our tools. Next is gonna be autopsy plugin. So of course, this will just be some plugins for autopsy. And this is kind of a hint that we need to use autopsy, but think outside of the box. And you can see here, we have a list of autopsy plugins. So this is awesome. I've never used an autopsy plugin, but that's obviously gonna change. And I'm just looking through this to see what's gonna be helpful for me. Well, I see Windows internals, so that seems interesting. What else do we have here? I'm seeing, we have a Google Drive plugin. We have a Microsoft Teams parser. That's interesting. A registry explorer. Oh, okay, I'm probably gonna add that. We have the recycle bin. Very cool. All right, well, that's really neat. Didn't know this existed, so I'm excited to try that out. Let's see what's next. All right, we have Arsenal Image Mounter. Okay, so Arsenal Image Mounter is for mounting images. I only recently learned about this, and I guess what that means is we are going to, I don't know if we can mount the encase file, the EC01 file we were given, so maybe we, oh, you know what? I wonder if we have to use one of their other tool, no. I'm actually not sure how this would be used. Maybe we carve an image out of the data file, or maybe I just don't know how to mount an EC01 file. That's also possible. Hmm, I'm gonna have to find out. That's half the fun. All right, let's look at IDA. So if you don't know IDA, I forget what it stands for, but it's for reverse engineering binaries and the free version breaks everything down into hexadecimal, or sorry, into assembly language, but the pro version would show you the pseudocode. However, I just want to say there is another tool that I boom, this is an amazing tool literally developed by NSA's research directorate in support of the cybersecurity mission. That's amazing. This is the tool for you because it's actually going to reverse engineer and show you the pseudocode along with a million other amazing features you can look up. Back to the toolbox here. Next, we have Kappa Explorer. I have no idea what this is. Let's see what Kappa Explorer is. So Kappa detects capabilities and executable files. You run it against a PE, ELF, or shellcode file, and it tells you what it thinks the program can do. That's pretty cool. So it's like a auto analyzer, and it even offers an opinion, I guess, which is amazing. So it might suggest, for example, that the file is a backdoor capable of installing services or relying on HTTP to communicate. Wow, that's pretty nice. Okay, I'm gonna have to definitely play around with that. That is super cool. All right, back to the toolbox. Let's look at turned on times view. That's pretty straightforward. It's by Nursoft. And it's a simple tool that analyzes the event log of a Windows operating system to tell you when a computer was turned on. All right, easy enough. Back to the toolbox. Back to the toolbox here. And next we have full event log view. That's probably self-explanatory by Nursoft, very cool. And it's going to display in a table the details of all events from the event log in Windows, including descriptions. Perfect. What else can you ask for? Back to the toolbox here. Let's look at the MFTE command. I'm not sure what that is. Let's find out. So it process see it, it sorry, it processes a file. I don't know what it does. I have no idea. 
Looks like it dumps details and it saves to a, either a JSON or a CSV format. All right, well, I'm gonna have to come back and revisit this because I'm just not sure. Oh, here we go. MFT parser for NTFS file systems. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. I'm gonna have to dive into this. But for now, back to the toolbox. Okay, let's look at the USB forensic tracker. Sounds kind of cool. Whoa, look at this. Orion Forensics offers a full range of computer forensic service. Yeah, I'm looking at it. USB forensic tracker. Wow. Look at all these options. That's amazing. So obviously we're going to be analyzing the USB from this end case. I have no idea how to do that, but uh, yeah, that's going to be pretty fun. Back to the toolbox here. We now have WinDBG. Ah, yes. The debugging tool for Windows. It's great. It has a, a GUI. It has a visual. It's awesome. It's not much else for me to say. It's you download it, install it. it has a nice little visual. It's great. Back to the drawing box. Next, we have Outlook Forensics Wizard. So I think this is gonna be pretty self-explanatory. Outlook Forensics Wizard. Perfect. Okay, so I bet you were gonna be pulling an OST or a PST email file from this domain controller because I know it when I used Autopsy there to demonstrate and run those ingesters, I did see some information to do with emails. Looks like it also collects evidence and document files, import directly. Cool. And they have a free download. Awesome. That's what I like to see. Back to the toolbox here. We're going to be doing FakeNet. Let's see what this is all about. So FakeNet is a Windows network simulation tool designed for malware analysis. It redirects all traffic leaving a machine to the local host. Oh, all right. That's uh, that's something. Not sure how I feel about that, but uh, back to the toolbox. Let's look at Oli Tools. <gasps> All right, so Oli Tools. It's a package of Python tools to analyze Oli 2 files, also known as structured storage compound files or binary files. Awesome. So Oli Tools does a lot of automation and analysis. I don't quite remember exactly what I use it for, but I believe I've used it for analyzing malicious documents for VBA macros. I'm pretty sure. Very cool. All right, back to the toolbox. Back in the toolbox here, we have a Wireshark Wireshark is Wireshark. If you've never used Wireshark before, I would recommend jumping over to Try Hack Me. They have an amazing lab, many amazing labs to do with Wireshark. It's a fantastic place. I apologize for my cat who's running on the cat wheel right now. Uh, <laughs> very quickly. But back to the toolbox. Now we have SDGB. I feel like this is some type of debugger. Just a hunch. Yep. Or it's a shell code analysis application built around the, my apologies if you can hear my cat running on the wheel. This looks very cool. It displays the user, all of the window API and shell code attempts to call. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Next we have resource hacker. This sounds interesting. Whoa. What's this? A freeware resource compiler and decompiler for windows. Oh, awesome. I'll take a, I'll try a new visual compiler and decompiler any day of the week. Awesome, look at this. That's fantastic. Well, that covers everything in the toolbox here. There's not much else to talk about. From here, we really just gotta get into things. So let's just take a quick look at some of the questions here to get an idea of what we're gonna be asked to do. So this question, OS product name, of PCO1. Okay. 
Then we're looking at... So I bet you Autopsy will just show us this info. Secondly, we're looking for a shutdown time on PC01. So one of our tools there was gonna help with that. It was by Nursoft. It was literally called Turned On Times View. I hope that does Turned Off Times View as well. That'd be awkward if it didn't, but maybe not. Okay, question number three. Who was the last logged in user on PC01? So I feel like we're probably gonna use I don't know what tool for that. I think we're just gonna look through autopsy to look at logs, uh, event logs. So I guess we would use the NERSOFT uh, event viewer or full event log view. Or I think autopsy had a plugin as well for event viewer. Okay, another question, IP address, uh, ports. We're, then we're looking for a file, a log file sequence number. I don't even know what that is. A, a GUID, GUID. So this is just gonna be a globally unique identifier. And if you don't know, that's how a domain or Active Directory keeps tabs on every object in the domain. All right, then we're looking at a link. So what link did the user visit? How many bytes were received by Firefox? So network traffic, uh, a folder name, volatility profiles. Okay, very cool. A master key for a user, a physical address in the registry hive. Uh, we'll be using the word list we're provided. That's good to know. And I, get, I guess we're going to use that to brute force something offline. So I don't know, maybe we have like, we've captured a part of the Co Kerberos authentication and we do, uh, we just crack like an NTLM hash. I think even offline, even simpler, just a guess. All right, uh, so then we're looking into some malware. So the name of malware, uh, a date when an attacker sent a email, IP address and port again to do with a reverse shell. Then we're gonna analyze reverse shell. Then we're gonna map it on the MITRE ID. That's cool, I love mapping things to MITRE. And for this, we're gonna use one of those tools there was specific to analyzing shell code. I don't remember the name. Question 20, uh, again, network question. Then we're gonna be looking at the name of the tool used by the attacker to collect AD information. I think I can guess that. Oh, uh, I shouldn't do this. I think it's Bloodhound. I'm just taking a guess here. No, it's not Bloodhound, okay. <laughs> That's funny. Then we're gonna be doing a PID of a malicious process. Cool, the family of ransomware the command invoked by the attacker, the number of ransomware processes, pool tag of ransomware process, address where ransomware is stored, eight bit, uh, eight byte word hidden in the ransomware process memory, a virtual address, a physical address, ransomware's file name internally, and then an API discovery. Cool, well, that concludes that. I'm looking forward to to getting into this and I'll be posting write-ups as I go. I'm gonna just, just gonna solve probably a handful of challenges at a time, if that, and post again, I don't know if this how hard this is gonna be or if I'm where I'm gonna get hung up. I know I'm gonna get hung up. I just don't know where, but I'm definitely going to post as I go and I look forward to going through this journey in the Cyber Defenders Blue Team Exercise Pwned DC journey with you. See everyone at the finish line.